My name is Nao Higo, and I'm the producer of Jeanne d'Arc for the PlayStation Portable. I'm here today to answer questions from our GAP members, so let's get right on it. As far as the benefit goes, because it's on the PSP, we have this really great screen to work with. And basically, uh, this screen allows for a lot of uh, pixels to be displayed at once, which enables us to put a lot of characters on the screen at once. Uh, strategy RPGs typically take up a lot of real estate in terms of the menu system and whatnot. So by having this great screen space to work with, uh, we really had the freedom to uh, make this gorgeous looking game. The other aspect of a strategy RPG is that the battles typically take about 15 to 30 minutes to complete. And that's actually perfect for the PSP because people are playing it on the go. So when you're playing it on the go, you know, you only have 15 minutes or 30 minutes to play, you know, when you're standing in line or waiting at the airport. So I think it really works out well for this game because that you're able to play it in little bits and pieces. As far as the challenges go, uh, the biggest challenge that we encountered is that this was the first strategy RPG by level 5, you know, which has typically made action RPGs. So everything had to be developed from the ground up. So the initial phase of prototyping and initial concept, you know, there was a lot of experimentation that needed to happen in order to make this game work. The PlayStation Portable is really great for that turn-based strategy uh, genre. You know, maybe even more so than the action RPG. They wanted a new challenge when they made this game for the PlayStation Portable. They wanted to try something different from what they've been doing in the past. They didn't want to be singled out as, you know, a niche developer. This is the only type of game they make. So in order to do that, they really put themselves out there, tried a completely different game, and I think it really worked out in the end. Well, there's a lot of different ways to do that, but the main way to customize your character is by utilizing this, this system called Skill Stones. Um, each character can equip up to six Skill Stones, uh, which allows them to have additional abilities, uh, such as special attacks or magic, um, as well as latent abilities, like additional HP or uh, hit point recovery systems or avoiding and counterattacking. Uh, by combining these different kinds of skill stones, you're able to customize your character to the way you play. So let's say um, you wanted a character that's basically a tank. So you want to give him as much HP as possible, as well as hit recovery systems, so that you can send him into the foray to attract the attention of the enemies, while your guys from the back are uh, firing away at the enemies to take them out. You know, depending on your playstyle, you can really customize your characters. Basically, divided broadly, there are four different kinds of well, character species. Uh, first, you have your humanoids, which are humans, elves, and dwarves. Then you have these uh, creatures called Terions, and they are basically a human-beast hybrid. Um, you'll see a lot of your characters are actually that type. And then you have um, monsters, and then finally we have demons. And within these different species, you have subclasses, and especially the humans, uh, the humanoid types, uh, they're able to equip different weapons, and that's how you differentiate the different character types. And each one, depending on their weapon type, will have different abilities, uh, different range of attack, as well as mobility. So by utilizing their different types of classes to your advantage, you can really take control of the battle and uh, turn the tide. We wanted to incorporate fantasy elements into the story. We just didn't want to, you know, we don't mean to tell the story as the historic, accurate tale of Jeanne d'Arc, you know. So, you know, I definitely don't want you to write a school report on the story of Jeanne d'Arc, basing it on the things. Not gonna happen. But, you know, by incorporating these fantasy elements, we were really able to bring out the strategy RPG taste uh, of the game. You know, we didn't want simply uh, a tactical game with just weapons and swords. You know, we wanted to bring in uh, elements of magic and dragons to really bring out our own flavor to, to the story.
And also with just the story itself, you know, we did put a few twists in it. So, you know, people who are expecting the, you know, the true story of Joan of Arc may be in for a surprise. So that's it for the developer Q&A. Thanks to all the GAP members who sent in their question. Jeanne d'Arc is coming out in fall 2007, so please check it out.